Hello, I'm Johnny and welcome back to my channel. So I just thought I would show you these two books I've been getting. It's about um, colour theory and colour mixing recipes. I have got no clue about um, colour theory. You'd think uh, with me loving watercolours that I would have studied it, but I just start reading it and it gets uh, boring and it just goes straight over my head. But um, these books looked very interesting and I thought it would help me to take on board the information that they contain. Um, the books are by Julie Collins, uh, both of them. Um, she's brought a few of the books out, but these are the recent updated ones. So I thought that would be best for me. Um, I won't go into great detail because I haven't got a clue. <laughs> at all but um she does um break it down um I, w I have been reading them but not like thoroughly i only got them um yesterday um she does break it down and she's got like a, a page that shows you how to use the book so i'll get into it which one first this one and this i like the design of this book it's um ring binding there for it's uh, covered. I've never seen a book in this uh, design before. You would probably have but I haven't. Living under a rock you see. So it says 3000 colour mixing recipes, watercolour. Uh, she does do uh, oils and acrylics and uh, other books if you want to check them out. Um, the ultimate practical reference to watercolour mixes and dilutions. Julie Collins, um, David and Charles. So the contents is an introduction, how to use this book, about colour and colour mixing, warm and cool colours, blacks and greys, relating to colour, colour in painting, materials, colour mixing recipes and diluting colours. Um, I need to go in a bit. In the introduction, should I read that? Well, I've got glasses on. Water-based paints have been a very long artistic tradition and watercolours as we know them today became commercially available in the 18th century. Before then, artists mixed their own pigments. Watercolour paints consist of a pigment a pigment mixed with a binder, usually gum arabic. Now I'm only just learned about that. Um that's the basic one. So these really expensive paints like um or is it Daniel is it Daniel Smith? I ordered some of his paint yesterday. I've never ever used it before because it's so expensive and I'm just a beginner. But uh, there was a colour I seen in one of these books and it was an electric blue, uh, iridescent, absolutely gorgeous. And I mean, I'm no good at uh, mixing colours, that's why I got these books. And I'd never be able to mix that and with it being an, an iridescent as well, impossible. And I thought, oh, I'll have to have that. Um, so I looked on Amazon and it was £10.49. I thought, no chance. And it was only a 5ml tube. And then I went on eBay and it was £8.19, I think. Still expensive, but I thought, it's not like I'm going to buy his uh, whole uh, load of paint. So I just thought I'd buy that as a treat and try it out. Very minimal use. Well, 5ml tube, yes. But I think, yeah, 5ml tube will go a long way with me. So, And where was I up to? Are available in tubes or in pans. Watercolours tend to be associated with subtle delicate shades of colour with light colour washes that bleed together and blend on the page. However, watercolours can be can be anything but insipid. Now I was going to uh, look that uh, word up because it sounds horrible, insipid. I still don't know what it means. As the pages of this book will demonstrate, Fresh, dual, bright and vibrant colour mixes are also possible. With relatively small palette of watercolour paints, it is possible to create, create a huge range of colour mixes for watercolour painting. 
as this practical and inspiration manual will show you. Its aim is to encourage you to get to know colours and be motivated to explore and experiment with colour. You know I've been uh, I've only been using watercolours for about a year and a half and there's not many I must say about just say if I do fifty um goes at it, only one or two will look um alright, decent to me. But uh, it doesn't discourage me. I mean, it's all a learning process. I just think that one day when I'm experimenting with it, something will just snap in my head and it'll all become clear to me and I'll be able to do better. You never know. Use the book as a handy reference when you want to know how to mix specific colour or as a catalogue of inspiration when seeking ideas to try your work. But first, start by reading through how to use this book, which outlines in the detail how colour swatch pages work, and take a little time to read through the remaining introductory chapters of this book too, as you explore some of the essential colour theory principles and outline recommendations for your work and materials. Now here, I get to read this a few times because it goes over my head. I get to, uh, yeah, you look on here and she shows you how to use the book. I won't go into that because uh, it'll take too long. Um, and then she shows you, I'll just get up closer here. But um, I'll have to keep on um, referring back to this because I get confused easily. And there's the diluting. And I'm going to try these out, the colour that you can get from the three primary colours. And this is warm and cool colours. I mean, they say it's obvious to know where a warm and cool colour is, but no, it's not to me. I mean, that says a warm red and that says a cool red. I do not know how to distinguish that, warm and red. And like the blue as well. Warm blue and a cool blue. I understand that the warm blue is darker and the cool blue is lighter, but looking in my palette, I wouldn't be able to uh, distinguish. And there's the blacks and greys. And that's um, greys from mixing yellows. I mean, um, this will be confusing to me as well because um, it's like, it says... To achieve this uh, colour, it's two thirds blue and one third brown. So, <laughs> I mean, it's like you put like a dot down and just you just have to like all guesswork. Well, it will be for me. To use more experienced uh, painters, you'll know exactly what you're doing. And this is relating to colour. And that's... Um, What's the name again? Julie Collins. That's a paint box colour chart. She's put here is a chart of some of the watercolours I have made with colours in my paint box. Recreating colours from the real world that inspired me. Now I was going to create a paint palette of my favourite colours um, that, that complement each other but... Um, I've yet to do that. Um, I mean, my favourite colour is green, but you can't just fill a palette just with green, can you? Um, so I think with reading these books and understand more about the colours and which colours complement each other, um, I'll be able to do that. So that's something to do with the, for the future. And she's got these like, um, I don't know if it's mainly the other book. Um, some of her paintings and she explains the colours she used um, like, uh, it says Windsor Violet dark mix Windsor Violet and Windsor Red 50% of each mid-tone and that she's telling you the colours um, she's used to create there so it's not like a step by step I mean if you wanted something step by step like I have got books in the past that's the books you get, but this is all about colour theory and colour mixing recipes. The more experienced people uh, know how to do with this, not me. 
and I just like the layout of this book as well um, and the pictures that she's put in so interesting it's not like just giving you a lot of words it's like the, I think the um, paintings pictures of the utensils and paints break it up There. When I uh, I never read the when I first opened this book I never read it and I flicked through and I thought oh my god straight over my head but when you read it a few times so you've you've got to um, go back to the front to see the layout so you understand it more but this is the um, oh, probably getting this wrong probably forgot again. This is the main colour, or is that the main? No, yeah, getting it wrong. That's the main colour, and that's the colour you're mixing with. But it's in different stages, like that's 25% uh, of the paint, 50% of that paint, 75% of that, and then 100% mix, and you get that colour. So I'll flick through these because these are just like all the colours. Oh, greens. Oh, and she shows, um, where is it? Yeah, at the bottom where it looks like the brush strokes. Diluting colours. And it says, the swatches beneath each colour show it diluted with water from strong to weak. Oh yeah, and she supplied this, um, I never knew about them. It's, uh, I'll just show you. Yeah, rip it out while you tear it out. And can you see? It's a little window and she's put on here. Colour viewing card. Tear out the tear out this colour viewing card and use it to view each colour to swatch colour swatch in isolation against black or white. See reverse. Oh yeah, so it's white the other side. I think uh, black would be better though. Um, background. This helps you to perceive each colour individually and will assist when you are making up your own colour mixes for comparison. A lot of the mixes in this book are only slightly different from one another, you're telling me. And when you are faced with a whole page of yellows, it helps to isolate each one to decide if it, if it is the particular mix you need. A colour will look brighter and more luminous against the black background than, than against the white. Yeah, so I uh, never knew never knew about this. So that'll be very helpful to me. So um, is there any more information that I want to tell you? These books will be a godsend to me. I should have got a book like this there uh, before I started watercolour to understand it more. Oh, sorry, I've got an important phone call. Uh-oh, I've stopped the video. Damn. Now this is going to have to be in... No, it won't be in two parts. I've learned to do the edit thing so I can squish the two videos together. Oh, I have to take that phone call. It's important. I'm getting a uh, washer delivered today, so... Um, and they said they're coming in the next half hour. So, um, yeah, I'll continue the next video. Look, I see I'm just lost now. Yeah, so that, that's what I'll do. There was, I said, is there any more important information I had to tell you? Um, let me see. Publishers note, the colour eight, no. Yeah, that's the end of the book. Oh, that's a shame. Um, oh, wait. Here, 
the ultimate guide to watercolour mixes and dilutions with over 3,000 easy recipes. This practical and inspirational manual shows a huge, huge range of watercolour. Use this book as a handy reference when you want to know how to mix a specific colour or as a catalogue of inspiration when seeking ideas to try your work. The free colour viewing card included can be used to view each swatch in isolation, sharpening your perception of colour and pinpoint specific shades. Get colour mixing and get creative. More books you will love. Um, and there's the other book she does. Uh, that's the front cover again. Very artistic. So I will get into the other book. So this is book two. It's a uh, colour demystified. Julie Collins, a complete guide to colour mixing and using watercolours, and that's the glazers. I tried that out that chart out with watercolour pencils. That'll be fun with me watercolour tubes or pans. Um, and this is the lady in question. Um, do I need to go out of it? Oh. Uh, can you see? Oh, the tripod legs in the way. There. So I will read a bit about her. Julie Collins studied fine arts at University of Redden and has been an artist, writer and teacher since then. She's very accomplished. She has written colour mixing guides and artists problem-solving books, and also writes for the Artist magazine. She works from her studio in Hampshire, UK, where she explores her passion for painting, drawing and crafts. Julie has won numerous prestigious awards for her watercolour paintings, including, most recently, the award of the first prize for watercolour at the Royal West of England Academy Annual Exhibition. Oh, that was a mouthful. 2019. Julie was also elected as an associate member of the Society of Women's Artists in August 2019. Julie is the author of Colour Mixing Guides in Acrylics, Oils and Watercolour, published by Search Press for more information, blah, blah. And that's uh, other books. I've seen uh, this book on eBay. But it's uh, the older version of this one, so I wanted the more updated version. Um, and that's some of her art. I think I'll try some of these out. And this, I've tried this out. This is a fun project to do. Um, like she's done on this one, it's um, like the glazing where you're overlapping colours. And that, that one is where, see, that's right. I'm very impatient when it comes to watercolours and I never and let it dry. And when you think it's dry and you put the other colour on and then it bleeds. But sometimes the bleed can look really nice. Where on here it's just uh, painted and she's let it dry. Then painted another one over. And then as you can see that one, it's not being completely dry. So it's bled in a bit. Because I do like that um, effect, the bloom effect. But if you want more detailed work, it's, uh, I don't think people use that, but I love all the texture that you get from watercolour. Um, and this, oh, I absolutely love this, it's gorgeous. I uh, recently bought, it's a <coughs> Christmas cactus, I recently bought one for me mum. Because um, I always remember as a kid, uh, growing up, and we always had these in the house. And I thought, this would be absolutely gorgeous if I could paint this myself and put it into a frame and give it to me mum. But um, I think I might struggle a bit, but it's worth a try, isn't it? I will enjoy the process, with especially with all these green colours. Um, what's the contents? Materials, the language of colour, pigments demystified, tone and value, palettes, the interaction of colour, modifying your colours, glazing, mineral pigments and luminescent watercolours, experimentation and inspiration, glossary and index. 
Oh, and there's um, <coughs> step by step projects. <coughs> I lose my voice. Oh, there's a few step by step projects. The Christmas cactus, Diane's teapot. pot. <coughs> oh, I'm going to have to cough. Right, back again. I think I'm turning into a man. My voice is breaking. <laughs> um, step by step project. Still life with tulips. Inside, outside, trees and birds. Right. So just a quick flick through. And when I first seen this, I thought it was a photograph of bottles, but it's not. Isn't that gorgeous? It's a painting. The introduction. Materials. There's all those uh, really expensive paints. I mean, you don't need expensive paints to do watercolour. Um, I suppose that's if you're selling your work. That's when you go on to these colours. Because I've got loads of um, budget-friendly watercolours. And they do me just fine. And quite a few of them's got a high light fastness rating as well. So, Archival. And there's the brushes. And I didn't know people were still using them. Um, and this is a, a squirrel morph. It's not a... A four squirrel, it's a real square. I didn't know I still did that. Used real um, hairs from animals. Because, I mean, there must be... Surely they wouldn't kill a squirrel just to um, make a paintbrush out of it. Do you think it's like a roadkill or died of old age? Or... Ooh, I don't want to think about that. Um, So, brushes, the paper... There's the supplies, talks about her sketchbooks, the language of colour, primary and secondary colours. Uh, there, I want to do this wheel. I wonder if she should use a template. I might trace that and put it, trace it onto my paper, because uh, there's no way I would be able to just do that. It would have to be a template or something. That one's cute. Painting a freehand tulip. Yeah, that's a good exercise. I have um, done that before. Turned out a mess, but I still had fun. And that's what it's all about at the end of the day. Um, these look like clamshells. Experimenting with complementaries. Warm and cool colours. And that's a parrot tulip. Absolutely gorgeous. I was looking at this last night. I'll get up close. Oh, my glasses is going to go on the floor. Yeah, I was looking up close. And see the detail and she's done there. It's like the creases in the petals. I wonder how that's done. Because when I've tried to do that in the past, it's just like all... Bled in. I mean, the paint, it does look like the paint underneath has been like slightly damp when she's added this. Curious and curious, I'll just have to try everything out. This is more me. I start doing something like a, a, a flower and then I don't let it dry and it all bleeds in, but you know that looks quite nice so. Harmonious colour. I'm gonna try I want to try that. It looks uh, really nice. Abstract. And this is absolutely stunning. Violet flower. And there's the powders. Oh I'll go out a bit, you can't see. And this is all about making watercolour paint. Oh. That will go over my head. Colour comparisons. Cadmium free colour combinations. Her artwork is just beautiful. This is absolutely stunning. I want to try this out.
staining colours, granulating colours. Oh, I absolutely love granulating colours because I just love all the texture. I've got some graphite watercolour pencils and I just love the lay down of them. When you put the pencil on the paper and then add the water and it just leaves this absolutely gorgeous texture. Oh, and she was saying, I was reading uh, this. Uh, she was saying how you store your paper and you've got to put it in um, some plastic, clear plastic, and store it in a dark place. I didn't know this because if you leave it exposed, like, I mean, this is only where I use for swatching, but this is exposed to light. I'll have to move it. It says that the sun damages the paper because it draws the, um, what is it, the... The process they make the paper, is it the gum or something, how they make it a waterproof, uh, not waterproof, water absorbent. And the sunlight draws it up to the surface, so it can't be used for, um, it just won't work with watercolour, so I will have to move that. See, so you learn all these little tips. Um, and what was she saying about this? The granulating colours. Um, the texture of the paper helps uh, to form the granulation and also water what you use. Um, she says if the water's hard, um, that'll uh, make the colours granulate. I suppose if you want a smooth surface, people might go as far as to use bottled water and like a, a smooth surface paper. But I like the rough textured paper and the granulating colours. Um, so it's very interesting, this book. More artwork, see that, the texture on that, absolutely gorgeous. Unusual colours working together. Oh yeah, these are the names of them, they make me laugh. But uh, this one, pigments with unusual names, I've never heard of this before. This one's, it's a yellow and it's called Benzim Age As Alone. It sounds like an antidepressant medication. Not that I'm on that. Uh, I'm just saying that's what it sounds like. Uh, fancy going into the shop and saying I want some Benzim Midlazone. Zalone or something. What a mouthful. And Quinacridone and how to pronounce that. That took me a few... Um, it uh, goes to pronounce that. Dairy light. Aureolian. I'd just take her. If I was going into an art shop, I don't like hair shopping. I prefer go online. But if you were, I'd just take a screenshot, uh, a photo of this and go, I want that. Um, Bohemian. Green appetite. Appetite. App not appetite. But spelt in a different way. Amazonite genuine sleeping beauty turquoise. <laughs> sleeping beauty blue like a smurf. Cerulean lapis lazuli. Well, that's a stone. I absolutely love the colour of that stone. Blue appetite. Adros ultramarine. There, that's that blue. Electric blue. Oh, absolutely gorgeous. Fell in love with that. So I had to buy that. And there's the other iridescent colours. I mean, uh, those that moon glows alright and that one. I'm not really fussed on the others, but that was me absolutely. As soon as I seen it, I thought, I'll have to see if I can mix that. But of course, I wouldn't be able to. I mean, it looks much better looking with a naked eye than it just through the um, camera. Tone and value. Try something like that. Tonal colour wheel. Abstract. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? This is uh, one of her little projects. Um, she says the paint she used was Daniel Smith Extra Fine Watercolours in Sepia. Uh, well, I've got Sepia, but not Daniel Smith, so that'll do me just fine. Brushes, squirrel mop. I'll have to get another mop brush because mine is just malted, hair everywhere. Other tools or materials, pencil and putty eraser, support. Support. 
Oh, that means the surface you're working on. Saunders Waterford, Waterford, £200, hot-pressed watercolour paper. Um, and she's shown you the colours that she's used. Um, and that's the finish. Absolutely gorgeous. It just looks like... It just looks like a real leaf. Is there a real leaf? And she's just... Is there a real leaf? And she's just picked it up and stuck it down there and so she can use it as reference. Yes, it is. <laughs> and no wonder it looks amazing because it's the real thing. Keep a specimen leaf close to hand as reference for tonal differences alongside your preliminary sketch. Well, yes, that is handy. And she shows you step by step how she's achieved this. I will be trying this out. It's just, it amazes me how by adding more colours over the top of one another, you achieve all this um, texture and contrast. And it's just, ooh, it gets me all excited. Palettes. Look at that. Is there a tawny owl? Gorgeous. Oh, that's nice. Earth palettes. There's some seaweed. Swan, oh, and that's really detailed, that. Maybe in the future I'll be able to try something like that. But, oh, wow, not like that. <laughs> that is really detailed. Limited palettes. Perfect colour combinations. The limited palette, the artist's palette. Oh, look at them. You know what? I thought that was a photograph, but it's not. Seven brushes. And there's the basic colours used. And the nest. My God. I didn't realise you could get so much detail. I'll go in a bit more. So much detail. From watercolour, it's a bird's nest. Wow. And there's light bulbs. And there's another step by step. That's the one I'll be drying first with the birds. Oh gorgeous, what's them geraniums? I've got one on my windowsill. Oh, and that's gorgeous as well. I've done something like this in the past. Um, I knew what I was going to do. It was a tree stump with uh, mushrooms growing on the side of it. So I sort of painted, um, but not like highly detailed. It was just loose colours. And then I went over it in the uh, fine liner. I mean, it was all right. I like it. That looks like um, chalk pastels to me, but um, it can't be. It's a watercolour book. <laughs> oh, look at that. See if I could achieve something like that. Oh, the white, uh, the uh, white, the yellow background just makes it pop. That's stunning, that. Oh, I like this as well. It reminds me of, um, oh, I can't remember the artist who does something like that. But it reminds me of sweets as well. <laughs> I've seen that somewhere, that design. Um, I don't know if it's been on a piece of pottery or some haberdashery. I don't know. I've seen it somewhere. Working wet into wet. Oh, I've never seen this. Comparing working on wet on dry and wet into wet. Oh, well, that'll be a good experiment to do. Yeah, so that looks like it's wet on dry and that looks like it's wet and wet because it's all bled. 
Christmas cactus. Oh yes. I'll be trying this out. Stunning. What's them pansies? Absolutely gorgeous. Oh, and even a weed. That looks interesting. Is that one of those where you blow them? They go in like a puffball and you blow them, make a wish and blow them. What they call pizza beds. Dandelions, that's it. Oh, a pair. Diana's teapot. Close to the end of the book. Glazing with mixes. Still life with tulips. Mineral pigments and luminescent watercolours. Mixing mineral pigments with pure watercolour. Oh, experiment. Oh, look at the feathers. Paint luminescent watercolours. I read that. And I've got loads of those shells. Experimentation and inspiration. That's what I'll be doing. And that's usually what my artwork looks like because I overwork it. And I hope that's not someone's um, work of art. Oh, it is. Oops. And that was the gallery. Trees and beds. Shows you're applying uh, wax resistant to the white areas on the trunks of trees and parts of the sky. Ooh, I'll have to see what that does. Oh, that's nice. Try that. And that's the glossary index. And that's more books from uh, Search Press. Absolute beginner. Absolute beginner, have you seen that? It looks uh, just so going about. Just so detailed. Yes. So um, I'll just show you what the thickness is. And this one. Because the first book that I was looking at was very skinny. And these are quite thick. Uh, um, how much did I pay for this? Um, I think it was more expensive on Amazon. And I paid, I think it was £9 for this one. And I think that one was £8. Don't quote me on that. Uh, how much did they um, to buy from the shop? UK £15.99. US... Oh! Sorry, I'll have to go. Cut you short there. Bye.